thank you for coming and, and thank you for your interest. And um, you know, thanks to Ella, who's been such a, uh, an, an incredible and an incredibly valuable partner here in Israel. I um, started by bringing a, uh, a class of students here um, several years ago, and the, the trip was, was very successful. And it, it led to this program, which I'll talk about. So I think what I'll uh, do tonight um, is, let's see, I think I click on the star is I'm going to talk a, a little bit about um, PACE and the entrepreneurship program, but I was also asked to include a bit about like New York City and New York City's entrepreneurial ecosystem. So I'll talk you know, just a little bit about that kind of quickly and, and briefly introduce myself. And then I have a, a couple short videos, uh, one about you know, the, the startup ecosystem in New York, particularly for Israeli startups. And then another one just about the students who have been working with the, um, you know, with the, the startup companies through this Israel Entrepreneurship Initiative. So I, I don't have a typical academic background. I'm not going to go through it, but graphically, I started on Wall Street in, in banking. I did well, so I bought a boat and went sailing for seven years, went down to South America. Um, came back and started a woodworking company, something I, I didn't know anything about. Um, then started working on a, um, for an FBI contractor in a forensic firearms identification system, working in about um, 25, 30 countries. That program came to an end. I, I went for a graduate degree in Australia, courtesy of a scholarship from McKinsey, and while over there, started a, uh, an online company called Stock Central. And then when I came back to New York, I worked for a, a, a VC, kind of a boutique um, broker-dealer VC um, for a while and um, was involved with the MIT Enterprise Forum on the chair of the board in New York and on the global board where the connection with Ella came from and the MIT Enterprise Forum of Israel. And I'd always wanted to teach. I started and it's an adjunct and then um, have been teaching at Pace. Love to travel and um, talk about entrepreneurship. So... I thought since this is about um, coming to New York, we'd just show a, a little bit about New York City's um, entrepreneurial ecosystem and what's going on, because it really is uh, quite, I think, interesting and amazing. So this is a, a new site. It was just launched a year ago called digital.nyc. So the top level domain is uh, .nyc, obviously for New York City. And as you can see from here, you know, just started, there's like over 7,500 startups, uh, you know, hundreds of investors. Um, these are open jobs, you know, that they're looking to fill and um, tons of events. So, you know, I just took this screenshot shortly before we left. And this is meant to be a portal for, you know, all things, you know, entrepreneurship for New York City. So take a look at um, digital.nyc and you could see in here, um, each of those circles with a number, that represents like the number of startups. So, you know, the very heart of it is around the, the Flatiron Building or um, Madison Square Park, you know, Broadway and like 20th Street. And you just see hundreds and hundreds, but downtown where Pace is, a cluster as well, and um, throughout the city. And I thought this was interesting. You may have heard of Israeli mapped in New York. Um, and this is just, just Israeli startups. And again, you can see downtown near Pace, you know, uh, 32, 4, 14. And then again at that, um, you know, center of Silicon Alley, as we call it, you know, 44 startups, you know, right in that one area. And, and, ex and Israeli accelerators and co-working spaces and investors, community and, and other ecosystem partners. And, you know, in terms of... Uh, you know, VC investments, um, you know, Silicon Valley is obviously number one, and I'm sure we'll stay that way, but what's interesting, if you look at the map for New York, while Silicon Valley is kind of staying pretty steady, you know, in these other areas, Massachusetts, Texas, and, and Washington are kind of declining, New York City is increasing rapidly and, you know, overtook what was number two, the, the Boston-Cambridge area. So there's, there's a lot of activity, a lot of investment um, going on, and you can see from the trend that um, you know, it's, it's increasing while the other ones are, are steady or decreasing. So with a, an ecosystem, and it's 
it, it's an area that I'm, I'm particularly interested in and in looking at the ecosystem here in Tel Aviv and um, you know, in other startup areas, whether Silicon Valley or you know, again around Boston and Cambridge. So a lot of people, the, the old way of thinking was, you know, how do we recreate Silicon Valley? And the new thing is, well, you, you don't recreate it. It's, it's very unique because of Silicon Valley's history and, and its own you know, um, strengths and weaknesses and, and, and everything that happens. So this was just a, um, a model or a framework from this professor at Babson um, that I was at a conference in London and they wanted to use this as a point of uh, discussion. I thought I'd point that out, like, you know, the role of educational institutions are really important, not just for, you know, graduating talent, but as a, as a convener, um, kind of a, a safe space for a lot of people to meet, kind of neutral territory, but, you know, and research, so many other things. And if you look at, you know, the major um, tech ecosystem, they tend to be located around universities, right, in Cambridge, around MIT and Harvard, Silicon Valley, Stanford really created it, this um, guy Terman, um, and, and Washington, and, and um, you know, Texas with UT Austin and all, and the Research Triangle in North Carolina, and of course all the universities here. But the, the role of corporations, you know, to um, be a partner and a customer of so many startups, associations like the MIT Enterprise Forum, foundations, you know, like grant, all the support organizations, the media to promote it, and obviously need investors, financing, and finally government, you know, plays a, a role, but it's much more than just, you know, saying we're going to cut some red tape or we're going to open up a, um, you know, an incubator or have a business plan prize. It's how all these things fit together. So when I was asked to, to speak about New York City's ecosystem, I added all these in, and you could see like educational institutions one thing that's interesting is when, um, you know, Bloomberg uh, recognized that we need more applied engineering talent and, you know, went through with, as I'm sure you know, the Cornell NYC um, program with Technion, you know, a lot of people mocked him and said, listen, you, it's not going to be successful. Boston is always going to be the capital for college, you know, colleges and universities and college students. And Bloomberg pointed out that New York City has more college students than Boston has people. So 135 you know, colleges and universities alone, and you can see corporations, of course, you know, tons of Fortune 500 companies, all kinds of associations, huge foundations, um, all kinds of support organizations. Again, like the MIT Enterprise Forum in New York was actually started in 1971, before the Cambridge chapter and before you know, entrepreneurship was a, a, not only a popular term, but even a recognizable term. Media, obviously, we have investors, financing, and the government has done a lot, and I'll, I'll show you a few of those slides, because that may be of interest. So they asked for our strengths, our gaps, and our unique identifiers. as me, somebody from Harvard for um, the Boston, Cambridge area, somebody from Stockholm for, Europe, for Scandinavia. So for the strengths, you know, I pointed out we're the center of the known universe, and the only gap I could think of was modesty, <laughs> and, but for unique identifiers, I'll talk a little bit about today about how important the um, 2008 financial crisis was in helping our entrepreneurial ecosystem and really making it happen. Um, and as we see, a lot of times, you know, crisis turns into, you know, opportunity. And, you know, of course, as I mentioned, Cornell NYC Tech, and there's just so many industries that are ripe for disruption. If you think of New York, like, you know, all the newspapers, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, et cetera, you know, that's being disrupted. Huge retail is being disrupted. Media being disrupted. Ad agencies being disrupted. So New York has to, you know, figure some of those things out, and, of course, finance. So... I think there's a, a few other things to, to think of in, in an ecosystem. And one is this idea of perceptions of desirability. You know, back in the 70s, New York was not considered a desirable place to be. Nobody you know, wanted to be there. Miami went through that trend. And, you know, the perception of, um, you know, Tel Aviv in Israel is very different than it was in even the 1990s. I was just uh, reading a, a paper um, from a professor up at Rupin talking about it, no one would have imagined it, and 
in a presentation that Ayla gave in New York, she pointed out that the uh, Ministry of Trade or Exports predicted that in 1990, Israel's largest export would be Jaffa oranges. Tech was nowhere on the scene. Um, but another thing that I think is interesting, particularly between um, Tel Aviv and New York City, is this sense of community, that people will give, people will help out, people will contribute, even if it's, you know, a kind of a competitor. You know, there's this sense of community. And uh, one of my uh, favorite entrepreneurship books, it's already about 10 years old, called The Art of the Start by Guy Kawasaki, the last chapter in the book is called The Art of Being a Mensch. You know, a mensch, that idea of, you know, giving without expecting something in return. And if you look at other startup areas or other, even, even without startup, just other uh, cities, a lot of times it's a very transactional relationship. Like, we'll run over to, you know, the city while there's a lot of money to be made, but when that dries out, we're gone. And that's not the case, you know, um, here, Silicon Valley or, or New York. Um, look at your strengths. Again, this whole coherent strategy, and this idea that it's real, it's not hype. New York City, um, back in 1995 to 2000, it was Silicon Alley 1.0, and it was all like sizzle, no steak. It was all hype. Um, and as soon as the dot-com bubble burst, you know, in March of 2000, it, it disappeared like literally overnight. Um, and it, it's very different now, and people are actually making money. I mean, I'm amazed. I'll go into a WeWork, you know, as, as I'm sure you all know, and just a floor full of people working, but then there's 10 floors of that, and then there's a dozen WeWork buildings in Manhattan. It's just amazing how many people are not just doing it because it sounds cool or, or it's fun. They're doing it because they're actually making a, a living at it. So with New York, we've gone through, you know, a lot of trends. You can see back in 1929, of course, the, the stock market crash. As I said, back in the 70s, New York City wasn't a nice place to be. This is a famous headline from 1975. Ford, you know, the president to New York City, dropped dead. You know, New York City was going bankrupt. Um, and it, it, was, it was not a, a pleasant place to be. Again, that perception changes, or you know, here's another major event that, again in March 2000. Look at this and what that did to Silicon Alley, you know, the, the crash from you know 5,000 down to uh, 1,000. And then this is something that, again, I, I think the 2008 financial crisis. It's interesting how much it helped. So this was a, a story in the New York Times that caught my attention. You know, after a reversal of fortune, city takes a new look at Wall Street. And the idea was that, you know, Wall Street or the financial services industry is about a third of New York City's employment and about a third of its tax base. It's a major, major part of our economy. But the city, and particularly um, Michael Bloomberg, recognized that this is not just a trend where we've gone down like the 70s or other recessions. It's not a cyclical trend. This is a major shift. And we really need to go from this kind of big corporate Wall Street, you know, head of law firms and papers and traditional businesses to figure out some kind of startup community. And it, it really didn't exist. Again, just that little bit of hype in the uh, 1995 to 2000. So, you know, it was interesting. A lot of people debated, what do you do? Like, yeah, I like this, you know, Schumpeter, you know, about... Um, creative destruction, you know, like let Ford and GM go bankrupt so companies like Tesla could come versus the typical Keynesian economist who said, like, you, you got to just pump in money and then things will get better. And, and I think New York City recognized they better take a Schumpeterian approach. And this was a, a Schumpeterian thing. But here's some examples of, like, the, um, you know, what New York City looked like. I mean, not even going to the 70s, 1983. This was the meatpacking district on the left. Now it's the hottest part of Manhattan. And not all that much physically has changed. It's a lot of its perception. When I say meatpacking, I remember as a kid going there, and it was very dangerous, but there were carcasses of cows hanging on meat hooks with sawdust on the floor. And it was, you know, it was a, a, a bad, dangerous area, like, you know, like the Chicago pack, meatpacking area. You know, now it's, it looks like that. The other thing is, as I mentioned, the head, the ground zero, if you will, and I don't like using the term ground zero from New York, but 
the, the ground zero of Silicon Alley is this flat iron building, which back in the, the 70s and 80s, nobody wanted to be there. It was some creatives that went down there, advertising agencies. My father actually had a, an office in that building. And everybody wanted to be in the glass and steel towers of Midtown Manhattan, you know, around Rockefeller Center. Now, everybody wants to be like here or within five blocks of it. They all want old, pre-war, you know, exposed concrete buildings without look. Like I, I went to Sosa and, and the Junction Journal, you know, that look, at which, and it's really neat what's going on there. But so now this is, you know, the area that, that everybody wants to be. Um, you know, and of course, for the future, you know, Cornell, NYC, TAC, you know, they're putting in billions. It's going to take you know, a decade to finish that. But they already started. They're operating, you know, in Google's offices. And it's, you know, a, a great place to, to go and see and, and visit and, and make some connections. So just a little bit about the, the tech ecosystem. You know, it's, it's a significant part of the workforce and, and indirect jobs. And that URL below, you know, nyctechnology.com, the real resource is NYC EDC, which is New York City Economic Development Corporation, I'll show you. But here you could see, you know, investment. And again, that's, you know, that's an important part. And um, again, to quote Michael Bloomberg, again, he said that um, talent attracts capital better than capital attracts talent. You know, if you have bright people working there, the, the funding will come, you know, as opposed to just putting out a bunch of money and hoping bright people come. And just, not going to read through all these, but just to give you an idea of how many programs there are for startups in New York City, um, artists as an entrepreneur, Berlin to New York City, um, bio and health tech initiative, I'm, I'm actually a mentor in that program, um, Thrive, Connect, Fiber Access, Cure, Digital, that NYC we talked about, um, hiring in New York City, an immigrant bridge. Um, Israel to New York City is a, a whole program. Latin America to New York City. Big apps competition, they make app data from like the subway system and mass transit available. Um, business plan competitions, pilot health tech, um, which I'll mention, we, uh, we submitted a grant with one of the, the partner companies in the Israel Entrepreneurship Initiative, Media Labs. Um, just so many things. Look at this. And again, I just copied and pasted this from nycedc.com. Um, and I'm happy to make these slides available on the, on the website. Um, but you, you can see just tons of those. And in terms of financing, um, all kinds of you know, uh, business incentive rates, commercial expansion programs, um, commercial tax incentives. You, you can see just a whole list of things that the city is trying to do for financing, um, job creation programs, et cetera. Um, you know, the, the, the list goes on. As far as incubators and workspaces, this is you know, hardly out there. There's, I guess, hundreds now. But, you know, these are just an example of some like BMW iVentures. If you're working on technology that would be of interest to an automobile company, you know, they have BMW set up right there. BioBad is a... Uh, biotechnology place and providing like wet lab space, same as Harlem Bioscience. Um, you see there's just um, tons of, of things. And, and again, and the list goes on. And WeWork, you know, I think I updated this last time I was here, 30 locations worldwide, 14,000 members. I'm sure that doubled already since 18 months ago. And I just thought this slide was interesting. Looking at, this was you know, in a couple of years ago, in 2012, as we were coming out of the, the Great Recession, you know, look at all these industries with high negative um, or, or just slightly or slight positive. You know, the one area, IT in New York City, was, was the one really growing area. And there's our, our man, Michael Bloomberg. So that was, you know, just a, a quick introduction of, of me and a little bit about New York City and its ecosystem. and kind of its history, because I, I think history matters. But let me talk a little bit about PACE and, the, um, and this Israel Entrepreneurship Initiative and how it, how it came about. So this is the, um, the main campus in downtown New York City. It's like one uh, very long city uh, block. And that, the tower is uh, 18 stories, a lot of it's storm space. But 
And you'll see it's just behind it we built a, a 34 story dormitory so that's going to be changed into classrooms and offices and apparently we found that after it opened it's now the l tallest dormitory in the world. <laughs> um, so these are just some pictures of the entrepreneurship lab, the facility that this program operates out. This is a small meeting room that also doubles as a, a video studio. We have a backdrop and some nice equipment. Um, you know, as, as you can see here, it was set up for a, uh, a shoot. I think this was when um, PBS was, was filming something there. Um, we ran a, a program for uh, military veterans for entrepreneurship. We got a grant from Blackstone, and here they were interviewing some of the, some of the veterans. Um, this is the, uh, a big like, work room in the um, space. And then we have like a, a classroom or, or larger collaboration room. And um, this is the associate director, um, Nikhil, who has more of a technology background. So this, this boot camp we did was you know, part about business and entrepreneurship and the second half about you know, technology. Um, so the way the, the program started, uh, its roots, as I said, I led a trip here. And I had been getting requests from the Israeli consulate. You know, they like these idea of the, the college treks or trips. And they'll be very, you know, helpful in trying to set up visits. And there's companies or nonprofits in New York that will, will help arrange them. And I, um, I, I, I didn't do it for a while, despite, um, you know, repeated requests. And then, you know, after reading Startup Nation, you know, I thought this, this could be really interesting. So to generate some interest, um, again, with ALS help, invited um, three is, uh, Israeli entrepreneurs who are in New York, and, and Ayla came over to give the keynote address. Um, you know, your, I don't know if you know your own Goli of Outbrain. It's probably with the most successful Israeli startup in New York. I mean, there's, and he told some amazing stories. I can tell you afterwards. Uh, Ron Harneva, who I just ran into at the Elevation Conference, he's on his next startup, and Amiad Solomon. And it's funny, they, they gave the talk, but they are, English is so good, I had to say, could you please put on a little bit of an accent, because they're supposed to be Israeli entrepreneurs. But they, they gave a great talk and, and created a bit of a, a buzz. And um, we also had people you know, from the, uh, the consulate come in. This was Nili Shalev um, speaking. And this was the, uh, the group we led. It was, it was a small group, only about 10 students, but you know, went from the, the north of the country to the south. And thanks to a Pace alum who's here, even got, a, that's Ilan, even got a fellow um, Pace alum, uh, Avi Mizrahi, to come and speak to the, uh, to the class and, and say hello, which was a real highlight of the trip and, and proud to count um, Avi as a Pace alumni. So because of the, this trip was, was successful, and this uh, man, uh, Michael Dezer, uh, immigrated from Israel to New York in the 60s. Uh, he went to Pace, uh, got a degree in marketing in 1968, and he went on to become uh, very successful in real estate development. And he was interested in making a donation, and he learned about this program, and he, he donated a million dollars and specified that a quarter million be specifically for this Israel entrepreneurship initiative that we, we put in a proposal. They'd be interested. Most of his developments in Sunny Isles, Florida, um, he's probably like the largest landowner in Chelsea, New York, um, and he develops uh, a lot of properties with Donald Trump, so Donald mentions Michael and Gil Dezer quite a bit. So we went, we had um, four companies so far. So we, we've done it for two years. The first year, was um, Fresh Biz and BioGenCell, and um, you'll hear from Yel uh, out about BioGenCell immediately afterwards. Um, Fresh Biz was developed by uh, someone, Ronan Gaffney. I, I just met him and his partner, Simka Gluck, again yesterday, and they developed a board game to get people to think more creatively and entrepreneurially, and like, as they would call it, kind of you know, win-win types of collaboration. And it's, it's really gaining traction. They've been uh, taking it to dozens of countries. And I'll show you some of the things that we did to help with that. And, um, and I'm going to leave it to Yal to talk about BioGenCell. Then this past year, and by the way, but when I say the year, I mean the academic year, going from September through till May. So you know, this next program would start in September. We had two companies, Voice It 
and EcoFusion. So VoiceIt is a really interesting um, app. And it's interesting that three of, of the four of these are in the, the medical field. Um, but VoiceIt is an app for people with um, speech impediments, whether you know, congenitally born that way or had a stroke or something and they, they can't talk or multiple sclerosis, just mumble. And there's a very heart-touching video where a, a young boy, five years old, in a wheelchair can't speak, and at the end he kind of mumbles, you know, blah, 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 and the thing is, mommy, I love you, you know, and it's, that's very nice. And then EchoFusion is a uh, digital medical app, which is uh, kind of a new field. You put your, one of their apps is called Serenita, you put your finger over the iPhone camera, and it measures your pulse and oxygen rates and all that, and uh, has a program to help lower, um, you know, hypertension. And, uh, you know, very impressive uh, board of uh, directors, MD, PhD, professors, et cetera, that have accomplished a lot in the field. So just to show you some of the, the things we do, this is, um, of course, um, Yael with a, a partner, um, Mike Frogel, a, a pediatrician in New York. And this was um, my uh, GA who was one of the Desert Fellows. So what happens is we hire two students for each company and we try to get the best and the brightest and we pay the most we're allowed to pay the students which is fifteen dollars an hour and then we hire two additional students um, one to manage like all kinds of events and meetings and coordinating activities and then a second one to handle technology website updates um, video editing etc um, what was nice with um, John Harrison is that he had a relatively um, medium to high position in Johnson & Johnson in finance and his backgrounds in finance and accounting. And uh, Biogensel was interested in you know, raising money and figuring out valuation, all that. So it was wonderful that here's a guy who would you know, work for Johnson & Johnson in finance could do that. And then a, another student who was interested in pre-med. And yeah, I'll kindly, um, th there's all kinds of interaction. This was a a talk she gave, as you could see, if you can see from the screen, understanding stem cells. So what's nice is we try to not only you know, provide assistance to the company, but we also you know, like to integrate them and, and make use of, of their knowledge and resources for the broader PACE community. Um, this is the other company I mentioned, um, Fresh Biz, and these are the, the two founders standing behind the table, uh, Ronin and Simcha. And among other things, they, they wrote a book um, called The New Entrepreneurs, and it's nice, they put me in, and Pace in it, and they said, we want to have a book signing, you know, when, we, when they launched their book. So that's an example of one of the things that we were able to do in the Israel Entrepreneurship Initiative is to host this book signing. And, you know, our, our bookstore is Barnes & Noble. We brought in copies, set it up, you know, have, have a, a bit of a budget to provide some refreshments and um, was able to do some marketing for them. Again, it, it was a board game and they wanted to test it with different groups. So here's one of my classes playing this board game. We also did a much larger test with um, over 100 students. And then the two Desert Fellows took this. They wanted to know what it would be like to use this game in a high school, to use it in like a co-working space, to use it in a company. So they actually ran um, a set of four tests of the game and provided some analysis. And again, that's inside the entrepreneurship lab. Um, for uh, this year's companies, uh, the man in the middle is uh, Danny uh, Weisberg, who's the CEO of um, the, uh, the second company that I mentioned, Talkit, or it's Voiceit, the product is Talkit. And this was a meeting in the lab, and I, I put this in the person on the left is a professor in our Seidenberg School of Computer Science and Information Systems, and she specializes in gerund technology, or technology for, for older people. And we, again, as part of the program, not only bring in other specialists that we can and, and provide work from the students, but one of those many New York City Economic Development Corporation programs that I mentioned is something called Pilot Health Tech, where a private company partners with um, like a, a hospital or a university. So we submitted an application on behalf of PACE and um, Voiceit to do some testing to train their algorithm with, with um, 
people in nursing homes. So, you know, it's just another thing that the, the program could do. Um, the person on the left is Abe Carmelli. He's the CEO of you know, the second company, EchoFusion. And this is just an example of, this was an entrepreneurship class giving final presentations. And, and he served as a, as a judge and, and mentor. Person in the middle, David Siegel, is the CEO of Investopedia and myself. So a little bit about the lab. We have all kinds of competitions, a pitch contest, a business plan competition, an op design contest. At Hackathon, we have tons of, of guest speakers, some, you know, some really interesting people, um, uh, and, and, and on every kind of different topic. We've had like Sal Khan from the Khan Academy speak, um, panel discussions, round tables, fireside chats, mixers, uh, workshop simulations, uh, video library. I try to record um, most of the, the guest speakers and activities. And we have over 450 videos on our YouTube channel and without doing any promotion. Some of them have like 10,000 views and it's, it, it, it's nice um, and hopefully it'll be a good recruiting tool. We have about 300 students that you know uh, signed up to be associates of the lab, a dozen faculty members, um, a bunch of alumni, um, a, a number of students uh, have started companies in the lab. A student who, who just had an exit last year, he didn't start in the lab, but he was a student a, a few years ago. Uh, uh, he decided he immigrated to the U.S. English was a second language, uh, David Araboff, and he decided that millennials need their own news site. So he created a news site called Elite Daily. I don't know if anyone here uses it. It's, it's quite popular. They have about 70 million unique visitors a month, and he sold it last year for $50 million. Um, we get you know, a number of different grants and, and sponsorships. And uh, we got quite a bit of, of press. You know, we've been in the media over 100 times um, since uh, launching in uh, February 12th, including you know, several uh, national TV um, spots. So that's the Entrepreneurship Lab and the, um, you know, the, the address, uh, the URL, and we'll pass around these. It, it has it there, it's paste.edu slash elab. And at the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see the Israel Entrepreneurship Initiative with more information than you'd ever want to know, or it's paste.edu slash desert after the, the person who had donated that. Now, if I could, I'll just, um, before we um, go to y'all, I'll show you two very short videos. Um, this is about the uh, team. Uh, these are the six current uh, Desert Fellows, just talking a little bit about what they do. I think it's about five minutes. Alexa McKenna and I am an entrepreneurship major at Pace University in oh, that's good. Here. Okay. and I worked with an Israeli startup company called Voice It and I acted as a marketing research strategic planning and financial analysis intern in this position I did a variety of tasks I helped to conduct research for uh, the beta trials I also attended various expos and helped to um, promote the Voice It app as well as remain in contact with their US um, officials who are here, and in addition, I also was part of a grant project. Through this grant project, I was helping to raise funds for their beta testing that would occur in the US. So a market research project that I was involved in was um, targeting the specific populations, like those with cerebral palsy, those with um, ALS, that could benefit from the use of the technology and sort of what their needs are. So I looked at um, usually the age range that the diagnosis is, occurs and how the app can fit into their lifestyle. Um, there was also something called the journey interviews where you would interview um, patients directly and just talk about their needs and what they were looking for in a communication device. And through um, this market research, I was able to then apply and create a portfolio for them to use um, for their further studies and development of the app. My name is Jalil. I'm a master's student at the Feinberg School of Computer Science at Pace University. As a Dazzle Technic Fellow, I worked with a company called Voiceit to develop a mobile application called uh, Pocket. I have been using a technology called uh, React Native uh, to develop this new application. React Native is a, a framework developed by Facebook 
that allows people to use uh, JavaScript to efficiently develop uh, applications for both Android and iOS platforms. After learning it, I think React Native is a very important technology and uh, it has been a precious skill in my toolbox. My name is Virali Javedi and I study Masters in Information Systems at Pace University. I consider myself lucky to receive Dizer Research Fellowship where I had an opportunity to work with an Israeli-based startup called EcoFusion. At EcoFusion, I had an opportunity to work with the CEO, Abraham Carmeli, on various design aspects of their app, uh, like designing mockups uh, for their onboarding process, identifying uh, strategies to uh, attract, attract new users and uh, retain existing ones, uh, also study um, human behavior to improve the user experience for their app. Three things why I enjoyed my work with EcoFusion is um, it made me more confident, it helped me polish my UI skills, and most important, it provided me an opportunity to work on live industry projects. I'm Vidur Bhatia and I'm uh, a Desert Fellow at Pace University. I'm an MBA marketing student and uh, I've been here for almost a year. And I was given the opportunity to work with EcoFusion on their application called Serenita. Uh, the important part about this job and this task was that I was working towards customer attention. I got a great understanding about mobile app frameworks and how things actually work when communicating with the user. I was working directly with the CEO of EcoFusion, Abraham Carmeli, and um, I worked on developing a communication matrix that communicated with the user based upon his or her usage at different steps and at different um, processes in the life cycle of an app user. The first task of this particular challenge was to identify what are the kind of tools that would help me understand this framework and work my way through it. Um, we worked towards understanding what are the tools that we could work with that would allow us to work on emails, push notifications, and in-app notifications and then eventually work towards developing a communication matrix that would help us communicate with the user. My work has been limited towards mobile analytics and towards communicating with the user, and I've worked a lot upon creative copy communication and at the same point in time mobile analytics for, uh, for Serenita. Hi, I'm Sumit Gujar. I'm a Deza Even Fellow at the Entrepreneurship Lab. I'm currently pursuing my dual major MBA in Information Systems and Financial Management in Lubin School of Business and Seidenberg School. I work as a social media marketing guy and also as an event management in the e -lab. So I've been dealing with new social media marketing techniques such as using the trending hashtags, the Instagram account, the Snapchat accounts, like experimenting with the live feeds and those kind of stuff. During one of the events, I actually met an alumni entre student entrepreneur and he was quite interested in my startup profile and my startup background and I've, has offered me like product management related internship for the summer and I'm looking forward to it. My name is Wei Xia and uh, I'm a graduate student in Seidenberg. My major is computer science. My daily task is to update uh, and maintain our website. Recently, my colleague and I are working on a very interesting project. We built a new website called elab.nyc. We use the uh, latest uh, library like Bootstrap uh, to go to to maintain our web website. We apply what we have learned from the course to the, to the project. We really enjoy working here. Um, all the student associates and uh, uh, data fellows are working not like a team, but like a family. Okay, so those were, um, oh, that's one video. Let me show you the, the second one that I, I have nothing to do with producing. I thought that you would just like it. Mm -hmm. um, Let's take a look at that. It's also a relatively short video. I'm Tal Chalosi, CEO and co-founder of Innovate. I'm Goliath, I'm co-founder and CEO of Outbrain. I'm Long Rock, and I'm the CEO of my supermarket. Gabe is Kevin, founder and CEO of Stella. My name, my check, Royal Vlogs. Mikael Bedebo. Zula. V is changing the way that people move around cities. We enable companies to upgrade their job description. We introduced the notion of uh, social networks to cybersecurity. Israeli Map to New York is an interactive map with hundreds of Israeli startups that came from Tel Aviv to New York. <laughs> Israeli startup is all about innovation, design, dynamic. Everyone is interested in Israeli technology. 
Jeklash is a mobile app to connect the Jewish people to our Jewish Future of Sam is the artist for Moshe's platform. Get it all about building the car service of the future. Kipi is a new way for families to save and share memories. You found San Francisco. You found LA. Welcome to New York City. is growing exponentially. The ecosystem is just amazing and supporting this company. Our uh, vendors are here, our users are here. We've got this amazing network of people that we've been working with. We enjoy every minute of it. Hey, love New York. We are. 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 Israeli startup, Matt, in New York City. I could play like some New York music, <laughs> but so that's the, um, you know, again, a, a bit about um, New York City's entrepreneurial ecosystem pace and the, um, you know, the Israel Entrepreneurship Initiative. One of the six students, so again, there's two students assigned to each of the two companies, and then there's two additional students you know, that handle one technology and the other um, marketing. And as part of the program, we have a, a scholarship that will give $5,000 to one of those six students um, to come to Israel to do a summer apprenticeship. So this year, Alexa, the first speaker, is going to come. And as you can see, our graduates, we have the computer science school. There's six schools and colleges. And um, I heard you guys got a big grant today. We just announced a, a big gift uh, last week of a, for, a, a, for a law school to be renamed. Um, and... Um, you know, Alexa is, is going to be coming here. Last year we had Sonali come, but Pace is six schools and colleges. Um, the, the most active in this program is, of course, the business school and then the, the School of Computer Science and Information Systems, um, which was named after Ivan Seidenberg, the chairman of Verizon, who's a, a Pace alum who, uh, you know, donated and, and had the computer science school named after him. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Yael, who will talk about her experience as the, the first uh, company in the program. And then we'll um, take some Q&A and have some refreshments. <laughs>